I wanted to dedicate the book to a friend of mine who I was at drama school with. Her name was Fretha Goody, and she died shortly after we left drama school. But she played Dora in our in our third year production. So I remember very clearly her performance and the, and her the beautiful way with which she executed this role. That was something that I needed Dickens' words, and actually the way he writes that scene at the, of her last moments is so beautiful and uplifting. There was I don't know it was. It moved me. People think it's stuffy and difficult to read, but it, but it isn't. It's just of its time, and it's uh, it's highly amusing, highly entertaining, and and very philosophical about love, life, and death. The things that really trip you up, though, are those extraordinarily long sentences that Dickens uses. A lot of Victorian novelists do, where you start at the beginning, and there there are hyphens and parentheses and commas and semicolons and colons, which take you to different subjects along the way before you finally get to the landing point of where the sentence started. And it can be three or four lines long, and hold it, keeping those balls in the air are really difficult. And you know, when you get one in one take, there's a real sense of yes, and then you screw up the next line. My first exposure to Dickens really comes because of great BBC classic adaptations of,、uh, you know, they've been doing them for years, and they remake them and remake them because, you know, they are beloved books. They, they really do stand up as comedic writing,、um, extraordinary character description and extraordinary character creation, which always attracts actors to them. Mr. Creakle was one of my favourite. My favourite voices, because he's his voice is very very specifically described by Dickens. It's as if he can't speak at all and actually has an interpreter. But it, the sound of it is so it's almost like a it's almost painful. It brings water you know water to your eyes because he speaks like this. You can't hear a word he's saying, and it's it sounds like somebody being strangled. The character of Mr. Micawber is one of those iconic characters in Dickens that really gives you a sense of Dickens' view of the world, his distaste for equivocation, his distaste for the law,、um, but yet he wraps it up in a character that is famously florid in his speech. Well, the biggest challenge and the biggest surprise were actually one and the same thing. Was Mr. Peggotty? I picked a very kind of gravelly, growly sound that became physically really quite difficult to to recreate. It took a lot of breath, and then these huge speeches would come up. So therein lies the surprise. I would turn the page and be like, "Oh, Peggotty, he's just he's just here and he's not going away." I just think getting to the very last chapter is is the most rewarding thing because it is such a big book. It's fourteen hundred pages, and you feel like it's never coming and. To sort of get to the end of the book and still remember where you were at the beginning of the book of why you started, you're in love with David Copperfield from the word go because you know he's going to be honest with you. And then in those last pages, it's it's a sort of he doesn't disappoint you. From the first chapter of the book, when you realise how fragile and vulnerable that child is, this little boy that's coming into the world, throughout the reading of it, maybe that's because I am. His protector as a narrator, that you just feel nurturing towards him, and I feel like the the reader does too. The reader wants him to succeed, and the reader wants to take care of him.、Um, so he he really arouses that empathy in in people.、Uh, but I think that is because it, it's so autobiographical.